Hello, my name is Greta Mangela Jensen, also known as Sandalsticks Theatre, and I'm a professional actor, storyteller and puppeteer based in the UK, and I tell stories of all kinds to all ages. I was born in Denmark, and one of my favourite Danish authors is Hans Christian Andersen, and I would like to tell you one of his stories, which means a lot to me. It was beautiful in the country. It was summer, and the sun rays embraced everything round them. And right in the middle of that sunshine stood an old manor house, which was surrounded by a big moat. And from the walls of the manor right down to the water's edge, great burdock leaves grew. And in the middle of those leaves sat a duck hatching her ducklings. Oh, how long do I have to wait? <sighs> and Mother Duck, she waited and waited and waited and then... Ooh, 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 crack! Beep, 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 Tiny little ducklings hatch their way out. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, how wide the world is! <sighs> My dear ducklings, do you really think that this is the whole world? Well, it stretches much further than you have ever been. But now that you are all ha- Oh no, the biggest egg is still there. And so Mother Duck, she sat herself back down and she waited and waited and waited. And then, oh, 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 crack, poop, 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 poop. But that is a frightfully big duck. He doesn't look like the others. But into the water he shall go, even if I have to push him myself. Now come along, ducklings. <laughs> Mother Duck was very impressed to see how well all her ducklings swam, including the big one. And once they'd had a little swim around in the moat, it was time to introduce her children to the duck yard. Now children, shake yourselves and don't turn your toes in. A well-bred duckling has its toes turned out. Now raise your necks and say quack. And so Mother Duck, she waddled with her ducklings to the duck yard. And as she was approaching, she could hear all the other ducks call out. Mm, how pretty her ducklings are. Mm, absolutely charming, divine, beautiful. And will you look at that waddle quack, quack. What is that? They had spotted the big duckling. Mm, what an ugly looking fella that duckling is. Mm, and his plumage is completely the wrong shade. <laughs> All the ducks were laughing at the duckling. They were taunting him and they were calling him names and the biggest duck ran up and nipped him. Leave him alone, said Mother Duck. I know he's not like the others, but he's doing no harm. Possibly not. But he's big and strange, so he needs a good whacking. Ha <laughs> ha! It's a pity you can't hatch him again. Ha 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 ha! Well, I know he's not handsome, but he is as good as can be, and he swims just as well as the others, I dare say, even a little better. I'm sure his looks will improve with time. Time passed, and Mother Duck and her little ducklings, they settled in the duckyard. But the big duck, who was so big and ugly, was pecked and pushed and bullied by all the other ducks, and it went from bad to worse. He was chased by everyone, and even his own siblings abused him. <sighs> it's all because I'm so ugly. And in the end, he couldn't take it anymore. And then he flew. He flew over the fence. And he ran and ran and ran until he came to a marsh where he settled down amongst the reeds. Bang! Huh? Bang! Huh? The marsh water turned red with blood. Two ganders had been shot dead. And then 
Splish, splash, splish, splash, splish, splash, splish, splash, splish, splash, splash. The big dog was running towards the duckling, growling and showing its teeth. The duckling was petrified and he hid his head under his wing. Splish, splash, splish, splash, splish, splash, splish, splish, splash, splish, splash. The dog had turned around and had walked away. Thank heavens, I'm so ugly. The dog won't even bite me. And so again, the duckling ran and ran and ran. And by evening, he came to a derelict house where the door was slightly ajar and he went inside. And in that house, there lived an old woman with her cat and her hen. The cat circled the duckling and said, can you arch your back and purr? No, said the duckling. Can you lay eggs? said the hen. No, said the duckling. Well, then what are you doing here? said the old woman, and she kicked him out. And again, he ran and ran and ran. All night he ran, and by morning he arrived at a lake. Time passed, and the duckling spent most of his time in that lake. Well, what else could he do? All the remaining of the summer, autumn came and went followed by winter which was bitterly cold and as it grew colder the lake would freeze and the space for the duckling to swim around in got smaller and smaller until he was <coughs> frozen stuck but a farmer saw the duckling and he walked out onto the lake and with his clog he broke the ice free and he carried the duckling home to his family there is goodness in the world after all. But when the farmer's children saw the duckling, well, they thought he was so cute and they wanted to play with him and so they squeezed and poked him and this frightened the duckling because it reminded him of what had happened in the duckyard. So he wiggled himself free and he flew around and he fell right into the milk pail, splashing milk all over the floor. Ah! This frightened the farmer's wife and it frightened the duckling even more and he flapped around in bewilderment and then fell into the butter tub and now the farmer's wife got out a spoon and chased the poor duckling and he ran around and fell right into the flour barrel what a sight the poor duckling was and everybody screamed and chased the duckling round the house but he managed to escape and he ran and he ran oh it's all because i'm so ugly and useless and then he collapsed under a bush. It would be too sad to mention all the hardship the poor duckling had to endure during the cruel, cruel winter. But he was a tough duckling and he survived. And once summer came round once more, he was still alive. And then one day he lifted his wings and he flew and he felt much much stronger than before and he flew far 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 until he came to a beautiful gardener and in that garden there was a pond and he landed in that pond but then in the distance he saw three swans and they were swimming towards him at a fast pace I'm in their pond. They will come and they will peck me to death because I'm so ugly. But better to be killed by such royal birds than to be pecked by the ducks in the duckyard. And so the duckling bowed his head, ready to await his fate with dignity. saw his reflection in the pond and 
he was no longer a dirty, clumsy, ugly duckling. He was a swan. And in a strange way, he felt quite glad that he had come through so much trouble and hardship because now he had an understanding of his own good fortune and beauty when he met it. And the swans, they swam up to him and they stroked him with their bills and they showed him so much love. And the duckling, who was now a swan, thought to himself, it doesn't matter if you are born in a duck yard as long as you are hatched from a swan's egg. And he looked at the swans and he said, I never dreamed of so much happiness when I was an ugly duckling. Thank you so much for listening.